Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and welcome back to our series Going Through the Bible. And today, we're going to be looking at the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. So open your Bibles, turn to the Bible, and go to the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 20, verses 1 to 13. That's Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 to 13. And here we read. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin and camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the people to drink at that place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, If only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die, along with all our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? This land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, no pomegranates, and no water to drink. Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle where they fell face down on the ground. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, You and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there, and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff, and water gushed out. So the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. This place was known as the waters of Meribah, which means arguing, because there the people of Israel argued with the Lord, and there he demonstrated his holiness among them. God bless the reading of his word. The holiness of God. So that was an amazing passage um, here. Um, just a little back background, uh, what's going on here. Um, this is the book of Numbers, the fourth book of the Bible, and uh, written by Moses. And Moses records here the events um, after the uh, first generation of the Israelites um, had passed, had died off, passed away. Uh, due to their rebellion against God after 40 years, that's four zero, 40 years wandering in the desert, uh, the journey from Mount Sinai to the plains of Moab, right? So quite a long time, 40 years, four decades. And um, so that's the background for that. And you may ask, we wonder why, why is it called Numbers? Why is this book called Numbers? So... In the English translation, um, the title refers from the uh, Greek uh, Greek translation, the Septuagint, we call it, uh, refers to the numbering of the tribes of Israel in chapters uh, 1 to 4. Right? So God is counting all the men. There's 12 tribes right, that are here with men who are ages 20 and older who are able to fight. And God is preparing them to prepare uh, the promised land. So it's the second generation. Uh, however, at this moment in time, um, Moses encounters rebellion against him and God. So uh, Moses' response, or if you want to call it reaction, uh, brings us to our topic here, and that is the holiness of God and what it means. The holiness of God and what it means. So, all right, so let's just go through the verses here briefly. 
So uh, in the first few verses, two to, uh, two to five, there's no water, right? And so um, the people have a serious need and they, um, um, they are uh, angry and uh, their hearts are hard and they're rebellious and they rebel against Moses and God, which we see in the first uh, five verses here. Now, at that moment, um, when people are reveling against God and Moses, uh, Moses and Aaron, they, they are the leaders, right, of the Israelites, and they do the right thing. So at that moment, they, they turn away from the people and go directly to God in verse 6. What happens then is God gives them exact, precise instructions um, to speak to the rock, to speak to the rock promising it will pour out water, right, for the people. However, as we read on in verses 9 to 11, Moses does not follow God's instructions and strikes the rock twice um, and also uh, speaks uh, to the people in a way not commanded by God. And so there are consequences. There's consequences here. Keep in mind we're talking about God's holiness, right? We want to understand uh, um, that God is holy and he expresses his holiness here. And so um, we read then that there's God's judgment, right? Uh, in the verses, I'll read it again, verse 12. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land I'm giving them. God bless you with this word. So, what happens here is that God, because he's holy, has to deal with Moses' disobedience and pronounces judgment, right? So God does not allow Moses to enter the promised land. So this is the same holy God today as he is then. And God, that is Jesus Christ, as God in the flesh, is equally just and holy. So that's a big one, right? So... Note, a note on a side note, though, um, that um, while God is holy and just, he is also full of grace and mercy. So uh, in Numbers chapter 27, 12, we read Numbers 27, verse 12, we read, One day the Lord said to Moses, Climb one of the mountains east of the river and look out over the land I have given the people of Israel. So God, God bless me of this word. So God gives Moses a glimpse of the promised land to encourage him. And so he gets an idea, he gets a sight, he sees it, and reminding him that God is still with him and that he still cares about Moses, <clears throat> even though he was disobedient. All right. Okay, so what can we learn here? How does God's holiness apply to you? It means that we are always to obey God and His commandments. Um, we are always to obey God and His commandments. We read in 1 John 2, chapter 2, verses 5 to 6, But those who obey God's word tr truly show how completely they love Him. This is how we know we are living in Him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. God bless the reading of his word. So we do we do well to always follow God's lead because he's holy and sovereign and always gives us exact instructions. So here are some examples of these exact um, instructions that God gives us throughout the Bible. Example, Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 17. God is speaking to them. Except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Example, Moses. In Exodus, um, the book of Exodus, there's um, exact details God gives for the building of the tabernacle. And here, the dimensions and materials are mentioned for the table of showbread. Right? So those are sacrificial elements and uh, things going on there 
So uh, we read in Exodus 25, verse 23, Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Oh, but there's sort of very precise instructions and dimensions. You may have wondered, as you read the Bible, you come across that once in a while, right? So um, I'll give you one more example of um, God's exact details um, and instructions in Genesis 6, verses 13 to 16, when uh, God is uh, speaking to uh, Noah, revealing himself. Genesis chapter 6, 13 to 16. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. God bless you in this word. So those are exact, always exact instructions that God gives us. And uh, we do well to follow <coughs> his instructions, right? He gives them for a reason. And um, so what it also means for you at the same time, uh, considering God's holiness, is that we must not harden our hearts against God, like Moses did in our Bible passage today, right? So that's one thing we must not do. And um, the author of the writer of Hebrews reminds us in Hebrews 3 verse 15, remember what it says, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. God bless you in his word. He is referring to uh, the author of Hebrews in the New Testament, referring to the rebellion of the Israelites, uh, the first generation, uh, um, having died off in the wilderness 40 years uh, with Moses there uh, in the middle of them, right? So it also means that disregarding the holiness of God and acting in disobedience always has consequences. So it's a big one. So if we disregard the holiness of God and act in disobedience, not obeying God, there's always consequences. So Paul writes in the New Testament in Romans 6, verse 23. Big, big verse here. Romans chapter 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you in his word. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Right? Paul sometimes doesn't, he doesn't write Jesus Christ. He, he changes it and writes Christ Jesus um, in his own way of reverence and uh, respecting God's holiness. So, to sum it up, as we understand, and you and I, we understand the holiness of God, um, having a repentant heart bent towards Jesus Christ helps us to obey God's commands. All right? So we need to have a soft and repentant heart. And uh, remember, too, that, that cannot, we cannot do that in our own strength. We cannot do that in, by our own means. So um, there's uh, one, more, one more verse here for encouragement to understand uh, what placing um, or having a repentant heart towards Jesus means. It's in the first letter of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. So that's 1 John 5, verses 1 to 5. So here we read, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? 
only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. May God bless you and keep you.